I want to read to you today from the book of Galatians, the third chapter, the 13th and the 14th verses. Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. Do you remember the scripture that said, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree? That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse, and at the same time, he dissolved the curse. And now because of that, the air is cleared, and we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available for non-Jews too. We are all able to receive God's life, his spirit, in and with us by believing just the way Abraham received it. Let me, let me repeat this first partial verse. Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating life. That's what I want to talk to you about today, and I want to start by saying we must be very careful in the church as to the words we use, because I think that we often misuse them, and we abuse them, and we don't understand them, and because of that, we often get defeated, and we don't feel good about our faith, we don't feel good about our lives, and we just get into these major ruts. Or fetters. Thank you. The first one, the first word that we often misunderstand, and I talked about this just a couple of weeks ago, just to refresh, and those of you who weren't here, just to tell you, is this whole word about mercy. You remember me telling you about me getting a speeding ticket? And when I got the speeding ticket, and I said to the cop, and I still am embarrassed by this language, I said, be merciful to me. I'm surprised he didn't just slap me around, you know? Be merciful to me. And he was. He reduced what he could have charged me with. He showed me mercy. It didn't mean that I was out from under the responsibility, because I still had to pay $122 actually, altogether, but I didn't get any points. It wasn't reported to my insurance company, which he could have done, and rightfully so, but I asked him for, for mercy, and he showed that to me. Sometimes we ask God for mercy, and if God extends mercy to us, then we think, how, how's come my life is still miserable? I ask for mercy, and I still have all of these Issues. Just because you receive mercy doesn't mean that you're off the hook. Another word is forgiveness. What does forgiveness mean? In the book of Psalms, the psalmist says that God is uh, forgiving, of course, and that God will forgive us of our sins if we ask for that forgiveness. And then it goes on to say that when God forgives, he also forgets. Now that's an important concept, see. Uh, Ruth, I'd pick on you, Gerard, but I always pick on you. Uh, no, let's pick on Margaret today. If I, if I gossip about Margaret, I don't, Margaret, but if I did, I'm just pointing to you. Uh, if I gossip about Margaret and it causes her harm and I feel badly about it, I can go to God and say, God, listen, I don't know what I'm thinking. That's way out of line. I was gossiping about Margaret. It caused her harm. I want to ask for your forgiveness. And if God says, okay, forgiven, then the psalmist also says that he forgets about it. What this means is that tomorrow, if I go back and say, God, listen, you remember yesterday when I was in here and I asked for your forgiveness because I gossiped about Margaret? God's response will be, no. I don't remember that. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? Now sometimes we think that this is the Christian ideal, that we should be able to forgive and to forget, but that's not possible for us. We're human beings, you see. We can forgive somebody, but is it possible to forget? I know that uh, in counseling couples who are gonna get married, Carl and Erica, I see you shrinking down back there, getting married. One of the things we talk about is this, this whole issue about 
uh, when people get married, the thing that they actually proclaim to each other in that ceremony is faithfulness. I'm going to be faithful to you. And I stress that this faithfulness, if broken, can never really be repaired. I have heard countless people say in relationships that have been torn apart by an unfaithful act or acts, that one spouse might say, I have forgiven him or her for what they did, but I just can't forget about it. It's just never the same. You understand what I'm talking about? Forgive and forget. So if we go to God and we say, uh, please forgive me, we'll receive that forgiveness. But if I go to Margaret and say, Margaret, will you forgive me, which I should do in the first place actually, will you forgive me for gossiping uh, about you? She, and I know Margaret, and know well enough to know she's gracious and kind, right, Margaret? Uh, she would say, of course, Doug, I, I forgive you, but I guarantee you, Margaret's never going to forget. Right? Am I right? So, mercy, we still have some things to pay off. Forgiveness, especially with other people, still means that we might have done some harm that can never be repaired. And word number three. One that we use in the Christian church often is this word redemption, to be redeemed. 